I graduated from this department back in the 70s, so it's really quite exciting for me to return and be able to play this beautiful instrument on this incredible stage in this incredible auditorium. You should all be very proud of the accomplishments you have done in making this happen. I would also like to thank the music department and the music faculty and Steve Wilson in particular for making my visit so successful and also my thanks to James Lyons who is the violinist uh, professional here at the department who will be playing the violin with the Mozart sonata that we'll be doing at the second piece. Because this instrument is relatively uncommon for people, I thought I would make a few comments about it. There are some notes in your program, but this instrument is a new instrument. It's about two and a half years old. It was built in the Czech Republic, and it is modeled after an instrument of the early 19th century. The important thing to remember in why I play this instrument is that it is the sound that the composers had in their ears. This is what they heard and this is what they composed for. And as a professional musician and as a performer, I find it very thrilling to be able to recreate the music, not as an interpretation like on a modern piano, but as the real thing, as close as we can get. And I find that very liberating and very exciting. I will give you a couple notes as we go through the program and what to listen for. So for instance, um, in the Haydn, um, Haydn is actually many times an orchestral kind of writer, and you'll hear things on this piano that are low and high, and you will hear, although it's almost as though it's a different musical instrument coming through, as is in the orchestra. So this is what the forte piano can do. It's like harpsichords, there are different colors in the regions, which is very different than a modern piano. Also on this particular instrument, I do have a damper pedal, but it is disguised as a knee lever, um, so I will be raising my knee to make the dampers work. There are three levers on this instrument. The far left one is the una corda, and the middle one is a moderator, which is a device which mutes the strings by putting on a row of felt between the hammer and the strings. And you will hear that several times tonight. So it is with joy that I bring this music and this instrument to you tonight.
instruments need to be paired and matched. James is playing a violin from the 1790s and it is with gut strings, um, so it is appropriate to, uh, for this period. And I think you will find that the match of the piano and the violin uh, are quite wonderful in terms of the way it melds. A note about this particular sonata, there are only two movements. The second movement is a minuet, which is probably 
one of the saddest um, minuets you'll ever hear, but one of the most beautiful minuets you'll ever hear. It is believed that Mozart wrote this shortly after his mother's death, and it was of that grief that this came about.
a word about the Beethoven and what to listen for. Two things. In this particular piece, Beethoven has a long scale that starts way at the bottom of the instrument and goes nearly to the top. It's a great opportunity because you hear the timbre change as it goes from the bottom to the top. And he repeats it several times, so you get several opportunities to catch that. The other is that it's a rondo form, and rondo has a main theme, and it goes off to a other material, but always comes back to that main theme. And in this particular piece, Beethoven, before he returns each time, does actually a, a bit of improvisation, although it sounds like it's improvisation. And you'll hear that, but it sort of wanders off, and you sort of wonder where it's going, and it sort of hangs around for a while, and then finally it comes back again. So it's a really a wonderful piece, uh, very charming, and uh, true Beethoven.
The last set I'll play tonight is Schubert. Um, these were written in the last year of his life. Um, they're just called three Klavierstücke. The thoughts were that he was to write a fourth and never was able to do it. But it is the full expression of Schubert's passion and his fascination with color. And he certainly knew these instruments very, very well because he exploits big chords in the bass and creates as much sound as he can out of the instrument with a lot of drama. We're moving beyond the classical period into the romantic. So I would push this instrument as sort of far as it goes uh, um, with this music, but uh, I find it is very heart-wrenching and uh, very beautiful.